So this garden is really looking amazing. I mean, I didn't think I was gonna love the bugle weed. I do love it in here, although there are a lot of white oak tree seedlings and some seedlings from this uh, buckeye that are germinating. So it's gonna be a little bit of a mess to weed out, but this garden is really, really beautiful. Love this hosta. I have not seen this variety before. I don't know what it is, but I love the green on green with this little white detail. It's just beautiful. If you know what the variety is, please comment and let me know because I would love to know. Then I've got my Sedum Autumn Joy in here. And uh, I'm, I'm really, uh, the red on that Nandina looks so pretty. It's finally, you know, coming back. Still not really my favorite look but it's, it's coming back. You know, I would rather see something evergreen in there, maybe some boxwoods and a, a dwarf Alborada spruce or something just to get something conical in the corner. But uh, I've got a beautiful little birdhouse from Good Directions. I already have a bird nesting in there. It's been feverishly nesting all week long. And then there's the front porch. I actually have two different hangers <laughs> for, my, uh, for my Reese because there's a bird that's been nesting in my other wreath and I actually wanted to use that hanger because it's similar to the black one. So then I'd have two black ones, but uh, I didn't want to disturb the nest until she abandoned it. So anyway, let's take a walk along here as we approach the front porch. We've got some Baptisia. My containers are still doing pretty well. And uh, you know, the front porch is sort of coming along. I'm going to be changing all of this over to pinks pretty soon. I do want to move one of those wreaths over here. I actually have a third one. Um, and that way I have just, you know, the colors going for some continuity. Just put up that sign, bought it at a flea market in Vermont. And my husband thought I was crazy because we had no place to put it at our old house. Little did he know we were moving. I actually didn't know either, but <laughs> I, I, it just spoke to me and I wanted it. And so we bought it. I did put some more coleus up here. I'm going to be planting the little vintage stroller with some, some flowers. That's going to be coming up this week. Have my outdoor area from Boutique Rugs here. You know, it's very similar to the one that I have down in the potager garden down there. But look, you guys are looking at my new garden. Now, I did not think I was gonna plant this, but I did. Uh, I wanna keep it low growing though, so I don't want my plants getting above like 24 to 30 inches because when we're sitting on the front porch, I wanna be able to see out. So I did plant this with the seasons in mind so that something's always happening. And in the fall, I wanna get some pretty peonies to put in there. But I think this year I'm gonna put some zinnias in there and they will be taller than I would like, but I just wanna fill it in. So, and I have so many seedlings, you saw the seedlings, so I'm gonna to have to put them in. But anyway, let me tell you what's here. I've got the Cat's Meow Nepeta. I've got May Salvia at night, as you can tell I'm a huge fan. Oh, I gotta check the variety on the petunias. I'm not really sure where they are offhand and I don't have a tag out here still. I've got some Iceland poppies and a coreopsis. It's not Moonbeam coreopsis, but I know the blooms get this like peachy, pretty peachy, orange, creamy, like yellow tones. And I thought that would be really pretty and I'll tell you why in a moment. I've also got some more echinacea here and some yarrow. This yarrow was really root bound. I should have really checked the plant when I bought it. So uh, these both rebounded pretty nicely. That one's still still uh, making some strides. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Look, we've already got some pollinators here and uh, some more May Salvia Night and Cat's Meow. And then over here, I planted a bunch of Larkspur and Snapdragons that are all in that peachy family some peaches, pinks, yellows. Uh, I think it's gonna be really pretty. And then I just tucked in a few petunias just to kind of keep something going on. And before we leave this area, I just wanna mention something about the buckeye tree because I had no idea that the buckeye got these beautiful pink tubular blooms. So I have seen hummingbirds going around this tree like all day long. 
So uh, Buckeyes, huge hummingbird magnet. And uh, I just thought that was so cool. I just thought that was very interesting because I did not know that. And then finally, I'll take you along here because the bulbs are pretty much done. Uh, I do have some Alien Globemasters that are just starting to bloom. This Viburnum's getting ready to go. I've got a nine bark in here. And we did just take out a Viburnum that was here. It just wasn't doing well. It had like one branch that looked alive. And so I'm gonna need to plant something else. I did wind up getting two more knockouts. So I have 11 here now. So they'll go all along the curve of that wood, of the uh, stone wall. But uh, here's Allium Globemaster close up. I love those. And when they're planted in mass, they just look so pretty. So I definitely need to get a lot more to go in along this border. So sadly, all of the tulips and the daffodils are essentially done. I do have some Siberian irises that are coming in and hopefully they'll bloom soon. I'll, we'll get to see what color they are. But uh, they're pretty much done. Look at, I mean, sensual touch has just seen better days, huh? So I'm just gonna let these just die back on their own. And I know it's not gonna look pretty while well, it does, but you know, they're all gonna be, you know, preserving their energy for next year's blooms. I have heard that the peony blooming tulips do not return very well. So I'll have to keep you posted on that one. I've never grown them before, so it's gonna be a lesson for me. Um, I'll probably plant some up there and test it out. And if these don't come back, they don't come back, but they were glorious this year. Again, I have a couple more Allium uh, Globemasters and I wanna really get more in along the wall so that you just see like a whole row of them when they bloom. All right, so the trees are done blooming here. We did get out here and tame all these boxwoods and Russian sage and we, um, you know, tamed some of these, the trees and the grasses and I'm still thinking about that rope sculpture over there. I'm definitely gonna be planting it, just probably not yet. I've got another tree sculpture in here, isn't that beautiful? You know, I gotta tell you, in the winter, wasn't sure how I was feeling it, but now that everything's leafed out, um, I, 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 I'm, I'm warming up to it. <laughs> it's really unique. I was thinking, you know, we were originally thinking we would move a lot of these sculptures to another area of the property and make like a walking path and put them all together. But uh, I think it's gonna stay. So again, we've got some dogwoods blooming in the background. All of the um, daffodils are done here. We really love this garden. We, we, I walk out here every day. I would love to put a little pathway in here at some point. I definitely want to plan all this up. Can't do anything like hostas or anything that deer eat because I know deer come along this way and they will just devour them. So it's going to have to be something deer resistant that can take some shade. We've got a church event going on next door. Um, got some really pretty garden statues here. and love, love, love the beautiful gazebo. Isn't it, isn't it so cool? My husband's an architect, so like this is so up his alley <laughs> and mine because, you know, it's, it's all garden. Look at, look at the pretty urns with flowers and the design. And there's some um, honeysuckle that they've been trying to train up. Every time I come out, I start to, you know, wrap it around. It'll eventually take. It's got a lot of growth down there. There are the dogwoods. And our property goes down out to those evergreens. So we're on 10 acres here. I would say about um, five are usable with lawn and gardens and outbuildings and pools, but uh, really spectacular. This spot in the garden really sold me. I knew it was unlike anything we had seen when we were looking at homes and it was just too cool to pass up. It was a great opportunity, so we went for it. I'm glad we did. So it's been a little while since I've showed you guys the Potager garden and uh, just real quick, we've got some Epimedium here, Baron Wart. 
really pretty. It just, it's wrapping up blooming. You can kind of see the little yellow flowers there. Boy, there's a lot of planes going overhead today, huh? I dug and divided some Sedum Autumn Joy and just kind of threw them in here for now. There's some Moonbeam Coreopsis and uh, these Hydrangea Paniculatas looked so sad when we saw this house. The branches were growing straight out so I did some corrective pruning on it and now it looks like everything's growing up and out which is great. So we did get my uh, self-watering raised beds from Gardener Supply in here. Um, I love them. I love that they're neutral and it's just like a different texture and it all just kind of works. But I've got it all planted up. I've got mint over here because you know mint it will grow crazy. Uh, you know, with all the runners. So I just have that separate, but I've got some basil and some parsley and uh, some cilantro, sage, a couple different uh, varieties of thyme. I've got my rosemary in there and I'm starting some strawberries in here. Eventually I'll let this become a strawberry bed. They're not gonna do much this year. So I just got them, you know, planted for now. Then I've got some arugula and romaine over here. I've got some zucchini and I planted a bunch of nasturtium seeds and I've got some marigolds in here. The, the nasturtiums haven't, haven't germinated yet. I've got several different tomato varieties in here and in here. And then I've got, uh, oh, I've got cucumbers over there. Zucchini and zucchini. Seriously, every five seconds there's a plane overhead. <laughs> Uh, I got a couple different peppers. I got a bell pepper and a habanero. My husband loves habaneros, so uh, I grow one for him every year. And then um, over here, we've got that gorgeous Lanacera honeysuckle, and I can't wait to see it bloom. But look, it's already, it's getting close. Now someday we wanna make this an outdoor kitchen. So for now, we just have our grill here. Would love to get a Blackstone and a pizza oven and just kind of have a whole setup going on here. But um, we just got the outdoor area rug out here. I brought this from the other house and uh, it rained. So I just picked up my cushions so they would drain out. But uh, got my wicker chairs. And I don't know if you guys remember my farmhouse table that I had at my old house. The top bowed since we moved it out here because it's exposed to the elements and uh, I guess just the sun hitting it it just was too much for it it was under a gazebo at our other house so my husband just built this totally awesome tabletop out of cedar it's beautiful uh, he keeps talking about sealing it but I'm telling him to leave it alone because I just want it to like weather gray and just kind of do its thing but uh, we'll see We'll see what happens over time. But I love how it turned out. He did such a great job on it. And we're gonna be adding some twinkle lights out here. And this is gonna be a great space to enjoy outdoor meals. I'm gonna walk down here. I literally saw the biggest frog I've ever seen in my life yesterday. It was huge. I've never seen a frog this big before. We're calling him Big Daddy. But this is the pond with the fountain going. I haven't been able to show you that because it's usually going uh, later in the day and I tend to film in the morning. But tonight I'm giving you guys a little bit of a night tour. Uh, is that pretty? We love to come out here and hang out. I do want to plant up this whole area. You know, uh, I'm not sure with what yet. I, I don't know that the deer come through this way. I may put hostas here and just kind of see what happens. It's probably a risk though, but that would be the easiest thing because I can easily take divisions of those. And I mean, worst case scenario, I just spray them. But we've got some spirea over here. We've got more bugle weed, which I don't want to stay here. Um, oh, look, there's a frog now. Oh, that one just went in the water. Look. These are not like the big one that I saw the other day. The, I'm telling you, the one I saw today was like the size of that rock. It was huge. It's that big. So we've got a Father Gila there and bar, uh, Barberry, Japanese Barberry. 
couple different boxwoods. These dwarf arborides have seen better days. All these daffodils are starting to die back. We're just gonna let them go. Um, and then we've got, you know, some honeysuckle up there. And look, it's actually starting to get buds. I can't wait to see all this bloom. Now, if I come out here and stand on the bridge, you can really see, you know, the gardens, the tree sculptures, and the house. So that's like a chain link tree sculpture that they put lights on. So it actually lights like the driveway and the potager garden. And then the other tree sculpture has lights in it, but uh, I think we have to get a, like a special bulb for it. So it's currently not in use. And just to wrap things up, the daffodils are all done in here. They're all dying back. Uh, again, I know people are asking me quite often on social media and on here what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to leave them alone and let them die back. I've got this Nepeta here and a couple of Spiraeas and butterfly bushes and Sedum Autumn Joy and Coreopsis. And that's going to kind of distract from the dying foliage of these daffodils. I mean, there were thousands here and they look so pretty when they bloom. So I'm not going to be doing anything with them aside from that. When they are completely yellowed and they're like truly, you know, not green anymore and they're just really done, then I'll come in and cut back the foliage. But for now, they are going to be staying like this and, you know, it doesn't really bother me. And that's it, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Stacy from Bricks and Blooms. Enjoy a beautiful day.